I rewatched a movie called Shattered Glass just recently. This was a movie that was uh, made in the early aughts. I'm not sure what year. Maybe it was 02 or 03, somewhere around there. And um, it's not a Whit Stillman movie, but it has a certain Whit Stillman esque feel to it. There are a lot of um, uh, good looking, white, preppy white people uh, who speak very articulately and wittily to one another. Um, so, in that sense, it's very, it is a, sort of a Stillman, a Whit Stillman esque. It also has Chloe Savini in it. Uh, who uh, has, was in a couple of uh, Wits, uh, Wits Stillman joints. But I had a very different reaction to this movie Shattered Glass um, when I saw it just recently than I did at the time. What is it about? Um, the movie Shattered Glass is based on a true story and uh, it's about uh, the magazine The New Republic when it was, I guess, still sort of relevant. I haven't heard about the New Republic for years and years and years. Um, I don't. I don't even know if they're still around. Are they still around? I don't even know. Um, but at the time that this movie was made, it was the New Republic was still uh, considered this uh, sort of flagship of the reputable. Uh, intellectual media um, and um, it was set in of course a little bit earlier in what 98 um, so Stephen Glass was uh, a, a staff writer for the New Republic and uh, he was a young guy and he was played he's played by the guy who plays Anakin Skywalker um, uh, can't think of his name right now. You know, the guy who doesn't like sand. Um, anyway, uh, he plays Stephen Glass, who is just this, this uh, um, reporter who makes up stuff. He makes up all of these stories that are amusing and they're, they're well written and uh, they're, you know, crazy. They're, they're, you know, they have uh, zany characters, zany uh, um, goings on, um, but he writes them as if they're real and, and he presents them as if these are factual stories. Um, and so this this writer Stephen Glass, uh, you know, subsisted at New Republic apparently for uh, you know. A period of a couple of years uh, and they kept him around and they supposedly fact-checked all of their stories but uh, but he was just telling whopper after whopper um, you know making up all these stories about um, different sorts of things that that again sound crazy but you know you, you, you read it in the pages of the New Republic and you think, well, that's a crazy story. But I guess it's true because it's in the New Republic, which is a re reputable uh, media source. And, um, but it turned out he was just making all this stuff up. When they finally, uh, when uh, someone from a rival, um, a, a rival group, a rival uh, uh, magazine, online magazine challenged a, a particular story of, of his uh, and it turned out that eventually you know it, it un unraveled that uh, none of the people he was writing about were real the companies that he wrote about that, that he um, represented as if they were real they were not real uh, and it's like this is all stuff that you I, I guess you, it seems like you could have found out in a heartbeat, but I suppose at the time, the uh, the internet wasn't. You, you you couldn't just go look up things on a on an online server as easily at the time. I, I still think you could. I still think it was possible to do so, but they just let it slide for this guy Stephen Glass until he was found out, and then after he gets found out, 
um, of course, uh, you know, it's a long uh, and painful uh, downward spiral uh, this guy takes. And he's sort of, he's a very manipulative, um, you know, uh, narcissistic kind of person, of course, as you might well ima imagine. He has everybody wrapped around his finger, concerned about him, you know, thinking that he's, uh, thinking that he's just, uh, you know, uh, a young guy who got into, uh, uh, you know, who maybe made a, a mistake, but who meant well the whole time when actually, you know, he was playing them the whole time. So, uh, I, I see this movie really differently now than I did at the time. Um, because I view the media with a much more jaundiced eye than I did back then. Now, not, that's not to say that I really, you know, worshipped the media back then, but I just, I kind of thought, well, you know, the media is full of imperfect people, just like every other line of work and yes they're you know they have their bias and yes this and yes that and, and so forth but I was much more mellow about the media in general um, it may be that the media has gotten worse or maybe that I have simply become more aware of how bad they've always been but to me there's something although it's an enjoyable movie um, there's something in it that, uh, in the the uh, denouement of the movie, that means the conclusion of the movie for those of you who don't know French, um, that just rings hollow. At the uh, at the close of the movie, we uh, have the the um, editor in chief of the magazine, who had been managing things under. Uh, difficult circumstances because people disliked him. People didn't didn't think that he had their best interests at heart. You know, he was kind of struggling with his image with his fellow workers. Um, but at the end, when he finally takes Stephen Glass to task uh, and boots him and and uh, says, "We've got to write a letter of apology for publishing all of this crap that that he represented as the truth when it was all." made up um, there's a scene where they all applaud him they, they, he, he comes to work thinking that he's gonna have to argue uh, his case with them and, and instead you know they've all turned around and see, seen things from his point point of view seen that he was right all along and uh, they've already written this letter of apology and signed all their names to it uh, and they applaud him and it's sort of seen as this moment of triumph for this, uh, you know, good, honest uh, uh, journalist. <laughs> good, honest journalist? Did I actually just say that? Um, <laughs> yes, well, um, as I said, it rings kind of hollow right now. I still enjoyed it as a movie, but what, uh, you know, the way I, the way I see the movie Shattered Glass right now, I'm 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 prone to think to myself, well, uh, what makes Stephen Glass this confabulator? You know, this imaginative guy, this good writer. Uh, you know, if if he wrote these stories and represented them, you know, as didn't rep represent them as fact. They would be amusing stories to read, um, but but because he, you know, made it uh, tried to represent them as as uh, as true to life, uh, you know, he was therefore uh, not a plagiarist but a confabulator. Um, that's uh, so again. <laughs> I'm inclined to see Stephen Glass at, at least as a writer more sympathetically, you know. It's not like people who plagiarize. There are tons of people who do that. Uh, and some of them get away with it. Some of them, you know, go on to, to have very lucrative careers. And when, the, when it comes out that they uh, blatantly plagiarize this, that, or the other thing, it, you know, it just goes uh, almost unnoticed. These, these kind of the, the stories about their, uh, their plagiarization of... Uh, of uh, other authors 
just it's just water under the bridge. Um, Martin Luther King uh, being probably the most egregious example of, of somebody who who uh, behaved in this manner, of course, and is now seen as the savior of humanity. But there are plenty of others who aren't not as a, extreme an example of that as that. Uh, uh, but this guy didn't plagiarize anything. This guy, you know, used his mind, used his imagination, and wrote entertaining pieces. And so I, I almost think to myself, what the hell uh, does the New Republic, and I don't, and I don't know what the hell do, do uh, the uh, does the journalistic establishment? Where do they get off their? Where do they get on their high horse with all of this when they are anything but honest? We all know that now. Um, now, in their case, they don't just completely, usually don't just make up stories from scratch because they don't, they're not smart enough. They're not imaginative enough to do that. Uh, instead, they just feed us the party line, which it doesn't take any imagination. Uh, all you have to do is, is be a hack. All you have to do is be obedient. Um, all you have to do is just read the copy that's put in front of you or, you know, slightly rephrase the copy. You know, we're going to go after Joe Rogan now. Uh, so, uh, so here, write this story about Joe Rogan and how he used dewormer, uh, you know, uh, and what an idiot he is. And, you know, we're going to go after Nicki Minaj now uh, because she, she made this tweet about her, her cousin's friend's <laughs> testicles. Uh, 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 getting getting huge after they uh, after they took a certain type of medication. Um, you know, we're just going to follow the party line. We're going to be obedient hacks. We're just going to do what we're told. I mean, I, I I tend to think that somebody like Stephen Glass is way above the, the uh, these types of people. You know, um, again, even though he lied, even though he made stuff up. And represented it as if it were true. These are good stories. I mean, I went back and I, I actually read some of Stephen Glass's um, pieces. And, uh, you know, if you read them as fiction, uh, you know, they're, they're not like uh, wildly unrealistic fiction, but they're, you know, um, so, so it's not like they, they, they strain credulity. But you read them and you think, "Wow, that's 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 pretty funny. That's pretty amusing. Wow, that that's uh, that this this kid's got talent." So I, I actually come come away just with a much more jaundiced view of as I you know the journalistic establishment now, thinking to myself, you know, Stephen Glass got a raw deal because he's a lot better than I mean he's a liar just like they are, but at least he's creative. At least he's got imagination. Uh, at least he's got, you know, uh, oomph and, and, uh, spirit and, uh, moxie, unlike the rest of them, uh, who, who, uh, you know, they lot, they're, they're, they're a bunch of liars too, but they, they, uh, but they're boring liars. I don't know. I still recommend seeing, watching the movie. Um, I think it's a well, well-made movie, but I'm, it's very interesting to me how my perception of it has has uh, shifted as my general perception of of the media in general, of journalists in general, uh, has uh, has uh, uh, has grown uh, has has soured through the years. Thanks for watching. Uh, talk to y'all soon.